Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 526. The name of our devotional today is I Know the Plans I Have for You. But first, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord God, that you have plans, my Father, for us, my Father, and they're plans that, that have glorious and wonderful gifts and endings and journeys, my Father, that are just glorious, my God, the plans that you have for your children, my God. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, that sometimes we have moments in life where we may feel alone, we may feel afraid, we may feel uncertain about the future. Help us to trust you, God. At those moments, we want to trust our future to you. And I pray, O oh God, that you will rescue us from our exile, wherever that may be. And that you have plans for us, plans to give us a future and a hope. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 through 14. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes. Search for me with all of your heart. You will find me. I will be present for you, declares the Lord, and I will end your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have scattered you, and I will bring you home after your long exile, declares the Lord. In the year 626 BC, when Jeremiah was just a youth, God called him to speak boldly to the Jewish people. Many had turned away from God, pursuing idols. And because of this, God told Jeremiah to warn them that he would remove his protection from his faithless people. He warned that the Babylonians were coming and would take control of the land. If they resisted the Babylonians, Jerusalem, its temple would be destroyed and the Jewish people would take be taken into exile. No one wanted to hear Jeremiah's words. The king and the leaders were angry with him. Some of the people wanted to stone him. Meanwhile, Judah's false prophets told a different story, urging the king and his people to resist the Babylonians trusting that God would deliver the people from the hands of their enemies. Jeremiah was arrested, persecuted, and harassed for calling the people of Jerusalem their king to repent of their sins and surrender to the Babylonians. But he kept issuing his warnings that Judah would be destroyed if it did not surrender. In 597 BC, the Babylonian army plundered Jerusalem, installing a new king and taking many of Judah's leaders to Babylon as captives. After another rebellion, 11 years later, Jerusalem was destroyed, but as it was as Jeremiah had predicted. Jeremiah 29 is a letter to the first group of exiles, written just after they were taken to Babylon in 597 BC. While some were hoping for their speedy return to Judah, to Judah, Jeremiah tells them to settle in for a long stay. He tells them to build houses, to marry in Babylon, and to promote the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because your future depends on its welfare. The letter also includes the best known and most loved passage in the book, Jeremiah 29, 11. Most who quote it don't know its contents. In words, it is very powerful. They have encouraged countless people in the 2600 years since Jeremiah penned them. 
Let's read these words from Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. If possible, you might even want to read them aloud. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all of your heart, you will find me. I will be present for you, declares the Lord, and I will end your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have scattered you, and I will bring you home after your long exile, declares the Lord. What do these words written to exiles who had been taken prisoner to Babylon in 597 BC have to do with us today? Why are they so often quoted and clung to by people of faith because we see in these words a picture of our own lives when things go wrong and we hear in these words a promise from God not only for them but for us also God will will not abandon us God hears us and when we pray and we pray earnestly he will give us that future and that hope God didn't rescue the Jewish people overnight. They lived in exile for decades, but they faced their exile with hope, knowing that God had plans for them, and that these plans, however distant in the future they might be, were plans for peace, and they were plans filled with hope. Seek him, call upon him, and trust him. He has plans to give you a future with hope. Thank you, my Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful word, my Lord. Thank you so much for your presence, your grace, my God. Thank you that you are a God of our salvation. You are the God of heaven and earth, my Father. You are the God that sets a mantle of stars in the heavens and you call them by name. Thank you, my God, that you are the God of the valley, the God of the mountaintop. Thank you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory today and every day. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, and dance in the rain. And remember the hundreds and hundreds of reasons why you should be smiling. Because God loves you so very much and you are totally blessed. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family.
In Jesus' name, amen.